A stalled state when flying an aircraft is undesirable to say the least. So when we fly, we try to avoid stalling at all costs. Designers use many methods to warn us of impending stall conditions, from a beep, 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 to a or a tick, 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 tick. There are many out there to inform us of when we're about to stall, but which one's the best? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to class nine in the Principles of Flight series. In the previous class, we looked at stalling and how bad it is for an aircraft when we're trying to fly it. And in this class, we're gonna be looking at how we are warned about impending stall conditions, because the best way to avoid a stall is to not even get near it in the first place. A stall warning system can be either aerodynamic warning or an artificial warning. We have seen some aerodynamic warnings before in the previous class, so we'll start with them. The main one in a rectangular wing is buffet. So a straight rectangular wing will stall first at the wing root due to the reduced downwash and the larger effective angle of attack. This means that the separating air starts to hit the fuselage as well as the tailplane. This separated air is obviously very rough so when it hits the tailplane and the fuselage it starts to vibrate. This effect is felt when approaching the stall and can be artificially made to happen earlier by fitting a surface on the front of the wing called a stall strip, which essentially encourages the air to separate at an earlier angle of attack, and it gives you more warning of an upcoming stall. Another aerodynamic sign of the stall is a sudden wing drop. This is because one, one wing may stall slightly before the other. Reasons for this can be something like a crosswind where one wing is in the full force of the wind and the other wing is slightly shielded from the force of the wind by the fuselage. This means that downwash patterns will be different between the wings and consequently the effect of angle of attack and stalling angle of attack will be different. If one wing stalls before the other, the stalled wing will drop and the unstalled wing will continue to produce lift which will create this banking motion and can eventually lead to a spin which is something we'll cover in the next class. Another aerodynamic warning of a stall is a pitch up moment. So when we looked at the stalling of a swept wing design last week we saw that the centre of pressure moved forward because we stall at the wing tips first so our average position over the whole length of the wing will move forward. So our center of pressure moving forward means that the tail force produced at the back is consequently producing too much of a downforce because the moment for the center of pressure becomes weaker because of this shorter balance arm. This would be our new center of pressure here. So the shorter balance arm means that this is actually going to be overcompensating down towards the tail. So it means that there's a pitch up moment. Obviously this can lead to a more severe stall and a further moving centre of pressure forward and that deep stall case that we saw last week. So the aerodynamic warnings exist but they do not always occur before the stall actually happens apart from maybe the wing buffet. There are more often signs that we have stalled rather than the signs that we are about to stall. This is why our craft use artificial warnings to give the pilots a heads up of impending stall. There's a few main types to cover, such as the angle of attack vanes. These are very common on commercial jets as they give a precise readout of the angle of attack. So the vane or the probe sticks out of the side of the aircraft. This is obviously very exaggerated, it wouldn't be as big and as blocky as this. And basically it's free to rotate. This would be a sort of spinning disc. And what it does is it weathercocks itself based into the airflow in the same sort of uh, way that a wind vane would or a wind sock. It basically aligns itself with the airflow. The comparison between the normal alignment and the aligned with the air alignment 
is converted to an electronic signal and compared to a database of the stalling angle of attack. And this can then lead to a warning of some kind being generated in the cockpit. This is a great system because it gives a constant readout and the trigger angle of attack for that warning can be changed according to the configuration of the aircraft. If we have flaps out, then our stalling angle of attack will increase. So we can actually electronically change the uh, warning so that it occurs at that new higher angle of attack. A rotating pressure probe uses the same sort of system. They measure the difference in angles between the normal alignment and the relative airflow alignment. The way a rotating pressure probe does this is a bit different, however. So inside the cylindrical probe, there are two pressure sensitive holes getting measured. If there's any difference between the holes, then the probe is not aligned to the relative airflow. In this case, where it, the pressure probe is aligned to our relative airflow, the pressure being felt by these two probes would be exactly the same. Instead of the probe itself rotating freely, it's driven by some sort of motor, and the motor will align it to this neutral point when both are exactly the same. That rotation is measured, the difference between the normal longitudinal axis and this um, pressure aligned sort of axis will be uh, measured and converted to an electric signal and we can compare it against the database and it also has that same advantage of the trigger point being changeable so we can change it with configuration and weight and things like that. So these two that we just looked at perform in an analog sort of way, like there's a range of angle of attack sensed and they can pick which one is the relative one. Because of this, this level of complexity, it means they're quite expensive. So small aircraft will use a lot simpler devices. One of these simpler devices is known as a flapper switch. So a flapper switch is mounted below the leading edge of the aircraft and when the aircraft reaches a certain angle of attack, the flapper switch is pushed by the air that has to deflect around the top surface. So the pushing of that flapper switch will create an electronic signal which will trigger a beep or something like that in the cockpit. It gives you a very simple on-off indication of reaching a set angle of attack. It's very cheap and efficient and you often see it on training aircraft. The disadvantage of a flapper switch is it is only calibrated for one angle of attack and it's very hard to change the sensitivity um, when we change configuration, for example. A fixed pressure probe works in the same way, sort of, as the rotating pressure probe. The difference is that the fixed pressure probe's holes don't rotate, obviously. So the difference in pressure is simply sensed and fed into a computer which will calculate the relative airflow direction and therefore the angle of attack from this information. In some trading aircraft, these holes will be aligned with the stalling angle of attack. So the air will only get in at the stalling angle of attack or close to it. And then one of these um, pressure probe tubes will be fed through a tube all the way up into the cockpit to a whistling noise and when you reach towards that critical angle of attack, the air is allowed to flow through. It goes in, it reaches the whistle, and you get a sort of noise in the cockpit when you're about to stall. Very, very cheap, and uh, that's why you'll often see it on training aircraft. The whistle noise isn't universal, obviously, and the electrical signal detected by the other systems can be converted into many different ways to warn the cockpit of the stall the most common of which being audio, visual and physical. So the audio and visual are fairly self-explanatory. You know, beeps, horns, flashing lights, whistles. The one that needs a bit more explaining is a physical warning such as a stick shaker or a stick pusher. When you're flying in a rectangular wing aircraft that we looked at before, we know that we get buffets because the tail is lined up with the root of the wing which stalls first. On a swept wing aircraft, there is no buffet because the wing tip stalls first and it doesn't line up with the tail of the aircraft. When learning to fly in rectangular um, winged aircraft, you learn to associate buffet with stalling 
and you feel it through the joystick of the aircraft. You'll feel that vibration as you're flying along. So on a swept wing, where there is no natural buffet, often a stick shaker device is installed. This is a very effective warning as you should have the association with stick shaking and stall developed through the training aircraft. The stick shaker device basically reads a signal from that angle of attack vane and will physically, there's a motor in the stick or the joystick that will shake the device similar to buffet when you reach a certain threshold. If for some reason the pilot does nothing to recover at this stick shaker activation, the same motor that shakes the stick can also be used to physically push the stick forward and to reduce the angle of attack, which is the only way to recover from the stall. So in summary, you have the aerodynamic warnings and the artificial warnings of a stall. Aerodynamic warnings, Buffet is the main one. It's the disturbed airflow hitting the tail and the rest of the fuselage causing vibration. Another one is the wing drop phenomenon. This is when one wing will stall before the other. So let's say we've got the one on the right stalls first, the one on the left does not. The difference in forces between it causes a rotation, a banking motion, which can eventually lead to spin, which we're gonna cover in the next class. Another aerodynamic sign of a stall is a nose up pitching moment. On swept back wings, as we stall, the center of pressure starts to move forward which means the balance arm gets shorter and our moments become out of balance. The downforce from the tailplane will not be correct as the wing stalls, so it will cause this nose up rotation of the aircraft. In terms of artificial warnings, you've got angle of attack vanes or probes, which weather cock themselves into the direction of airflow like a windsock or um, a weather vane. The difference in the relative airflow position and the original position is measured and compared against database of stalling angles and you can change the trigger point depending on configuration. A rotating pressure probe works roughly the same except it seeks out the neutral point because these two uh, pressure sensitive holes have to be equalized in order for them to be lined up with the airflow. So a motor will drive the pressure probe around seeking this neutral point. And again, we can measure that against a database and a trigger point can be set. So more simple devices are a flapper switch, which will be activated when the air flows beneath it and hits it and pushes it up. Good, cheap, simple, but only useful for one angle of attack. A fixed pressure probe uses the same comparison logic from the rotating pressure probe. Where they are equal, that is the direction of airflow and any differences between them can be measured and converted into an angle of attack. And in terms of feedback, you've got audio, visual and physical. Physical, is a stick shaker or stick stick shaker device which will replicate buffet and a stick pusher will come in afterwards to physically move the stick forward and reduce the angle of attack.